President Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. Wildwood, thank you. We love Wildwood. We've been here many times. We love this place. And there's nowhere else I'd rather be this beautiful evening. It is a nice one, right? Then right here on the Jersey Shore at the world-famous Wildwood Boardwalk. Great place. With thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. As you can see today, we're expanding the electoral map because we are going to officially play in the state of New Jersey. We're going to win the state of New Jersey. Got a great group of people with us, an incredible group of people. We're also looking really great in the state of Minnesota, which hasn't been won since 1952, and we're leading in the polls, and the state of Virginia, and actually many other states. I don't know, it could be all of them. This guy's so damn bad, it could be all of them. He's so bad, I think we're going to win them all. All across America, millions of people in so-called blue states are joining our movement based on love, intelligence, and a thing called common sense. And no one has more common sense than the tough, strong, incredible, brilliant people of New Jersey. I love New Jersey. I love New Jersey. I'm here all the time. Whether you're a Republican, conservative, independent, or even a registered Democrat, I'm asking for your help in saving America. Our country's in trouble. It's in big trouble. We've never been in trouble. We'll end up in World War III. These guys are grossly incompetent. They have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing. You know in your heart that this country is not going to survive four more years of crooked Joe Biden. He's crooked and he's corrupt and he's incompetent. Other than that, he's doing quite a good job. Think of that. He's crooked. He's incompetent. He's the worst president we've ever had. Other than that, he's doing quite a good job. What do you think, Lawrence Taylor? Yes? Doing a great job. <laughs> 
Uh, look at those two guys, O.J. Lawrence, my golfing friends. <laughs> We don't have to agree on everything, but we can agree that we want strong borders, not open borders. We want the American dream, not the Biden inflation nightmare. We want safe communities, not defund the police and abolish cash bail. How about cash bail? Of course, with me, they probably want bail. Let's get Trump to put. I'll be the only one in the country to put up bail. And instead of Joe Biden's weakness and chaos, we want peace through strength like we had it just four years ago. It's time to set up, and, and really what we have to do, we have to set high standards because this country has never been in a position like we're in right now. We're laughed at all over the world. Leaders that respected us four years ago are laughing at us. So it's time to set other differences aside and come together, get the job done for America. We're going to make America great again, and we're going to do it fast. And we're going to look at Biden. I'm sure nobody ever saw The Apprentice. That was our big hit. That was a big, powerful hit. But I'm going to look at that guy, and I'm going to say, Joe Biden, you're the worst ever. Joe Biden, you're fired. Get out of here. You're fired. Get out of here, Joe. We're going to straighten out our country. We're not going to destroy it. He's destroying it. As you know, summers at the Jersey Shore have always been a fixture of life for families all across the region. But thanks to the 50 percent Biden inflation tax, you know, it's a new tax. Two weeks ago, I was looking at inflation numbers. They're devastating. They're country busters. When you have inflation, it breaks countries. And I'm talking about 500 years ago and 300 years ago. And they're country busters. And it's a tradition that you have here that's so incredible, but you're being busted by inflation. Everybody is all over the country. In the past three years, the average New Jersey family has lost $23,381 to the inflation tax. That's a hell of a lot. And frankly, they're using fake numbers because they don't include the worst numbers. And the Biden price hikes are continuing to drain over $1,000 from the typical New Jersey family budget every single month. So it's a thousand. That's $12,000 for a family. Hot dogs. Let's talk about hot dogs. I just had one, actually. I just had one. It was very good. I hope it was made here. I don't know. You know, it was very good. Frank Sinatra told me a long time ago, never eat before you perform. I said, I'm not performing. I'm a politician, if you can believe it. I hate to be called a politician. I like I'm a businessman much better, but I guess I'm a politician. Because we did great in 2016. We did much better in 2020. A lot better. We got millions more votes. So I guess... And this time, and I will say this, the spirit that we have this time blows both of them away. You know why? Because you're still like me, but you saw what the alternative is. The alternative, it's just, the alternative is not a good thing. But I just had the best hot dog, so I said, Frank, I'm sorry. Now, Pavarotti was a good friend. He didn't have that same. He ate all the time. He didn't care. But I just had a hot dog, and it was very good. So uh, the price of hot dogs up 22 percent, chickens up 32 percent, hamburgers are up 37 percent. That's why I had the hot dog. It went up the least. <laughs> Sodas up 30 percent, eggs are up 50 percent, gasoline's up 50 percent, bacon is up 79 percent. Bacon. That's why I don't have bacon anymore. It's too expensive. Not one thing is cheaper. There's not one thing anywhere. There's not one item. That's cheaper. Energy is way up. That's what caused the problem. Uh, you had low energy. You had energy at $1.87. Now it's up to almost $4 again, and it's going up higher. In California, it's got seven, just hit $7.21 today. Some place was ripping you off. And if you're young and looking to buy a home, the 30-year mortgage rate is almost at 8%. When I left office, it was 2.6%, 2.6, a little different. The choice for New Jersey and Pennsylvania is simple. If you want lower cost, higher income, and more weekends down at the shore, let's go down at the shore. Of course, it always depends on who the hell is there, right?
The wrong people are there. You don't want to go down to the shore, but you have the right people. But they, uh, we love the shore. I know the shore better than most of the people that are here. I hate to tell you that. There's nothing like it. It's one of the best. But you have to vote. If you want to keep it going, you have to vote for a gentleman named Donald J. Trump. Have you heard of him? Have you heard of him? Thank you. You know, you can't even see the back. There's so many people here. There's so many people here. Man. Over 100,000 people. This is supposed to be, you know, they thought they'd hit 40. So they more than doubled it. But you can't even see the end. I wish we didn't have the press here. I wish we moved them the hell back so they'd have, because they can't see in the back. You know, I always tell the press, Turn your cameras around to show the audience, okay? They never do it. Look, look, fake news. They never do it. They never do it. They're saying turn around. It is true. It's uh, they, I don't know why. Even the ones that are sort of like friendly to me aren't too many about I'd say about seven or eight percent. But they're good. They're really they're believers. But they never turn around. And I'd love them to show the crowd as far as the eye can see. I'd love them to show. But they don't do it. And I used to think it was a mechanical problem. You know, they have the best cameras in the world. They have the tripods, everything's. And I figured the steel, you can't do it. But then I realized early in the campaign in 2016, I realized there was a fight in the back. It was a bad fight. Somebody got into a fight way in the back. And those cameras turned around like a pretzel because they wanted to show the fight because that meant trouble. That was a bad thing. So those same cameras that you're looking at, they were turned into a pretzel. They showed that fight in detail. They showed every blow, every blow to the face they showed. So I realized that wasn't the reason. They just don't want to do it. I can't figure it out. Here in New Jersey, you're suffering under some of the highest property taxes and sales taxes in the nation. Just about the highest. And now Crooked Joe wants to massively raise your income taxes, promising that the Trump tax cut. So I got you the biggest tax cut in the history of our country, bigger than the Reagan tax cuts years before. But they want to cut the Trump. He wants to get rid of the Trump tax cuts. Now they expire. So instead of just renewing them, he says, going to expire. And if I'm reelected, he doesn't even know what the hell he's saying. Don't forget, he can't put two sentences together. He can't find the stairs off a stage. Let's see this stage when I'm finished. I got stairs there. I got stairs there. I got a nice ramp there. I got stairs there. And if it got really dangerous, I could jump off the front. There's nice sand. You ever see him when he's finished? He finishes a speech, which usually lasts about a minute and a half. And he always goes like this. And then he doesn't know where he goes. But you know, we have great people, Secret Service. They always run up on the stage and they lead him off the stage. They're great. But he wants to let our tax cuts expire. And I don't do that anymore. You know, I don't imitate him anymore because I called my wife, our great first lady, and I said, first lady, we had a big speech. By the way, not as many people as this. This is like big record stuff on television, even on the haters. They said this may be the biggest rally they've ever seen, political rally. But I called our first lady. I said, so. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Hey, look, Superman is up. We have Uncle Sam. We have Superman. I said, first lady, how good was that? I was talking. I made a nice speech one big crowd. I said, and it's all over town. Look at all that press. Look at all of them. 
So it's all over television. So I said, First Lady, how great a speech was that? Who else is drawing like that? Nobody could draw crowds like that. How great was I? She said, you were okay. Oh. I said, why? What's wrong? Well, you couldn't find your way off the stage. So I was imitating him. And they said, I couldn't find my way off. That's what happened. So I have to be very careful. I'm doing the imitation, walking around. And the fake news said, Trump could not find his way off. So I don't do that anymore. I just do a modified version. I do a very modified version. That happens a lot with the fake news. You know, that's why they call them the fake news. But that means that under Biden, the average New Jersey worker will see a tax increase of just on this. Now, I've already gone through two tax increases, but you have another one. Add on to what I just said with the inflation tax, because that's a real tax. $2,700 per year at a time when 73% of Americans are living from paycheck to paycheck, which is a record. Never had that many people. But think of it. Oh, I wonder who that might be. Oh, that's Joe Biden. He doesn't want to land. No, we're going to win New Jersey. We're going to win New Jersey. No, if we win New Jersey, we win the whole thing. I think, you know, I think we're going to win some others also, actually. If Joe Biden wins this election, the middle class loses and New Jersey loses. But if Trump wins, the middle class wins, the people of low income really start winning again. And you're all going for the American dream. New Jersey wins, Pennsylvania wins, America wins. We have a lot of people. Who's from Pennsylvania? Who's from? Yeah, a lot of people. I went to school in Pennsylvania. Of course, you know, it's never quite the same when you're looking because he's lost control of my beautiful school. They're rioting in front of my school all the time. What's going on here? Instead of a Biden tax hike, I'll give you a Trump middle class, upper class, lower class, business class, big tax cut. You're going to have the biggest tax cut. And we were set to do that. We were all set to do it. You know, it's interesting. When we did the tax cuts, everyone said you can't do those tax cuts. We took in more income after the tax cut. And the tax cut was massive. Everybody here knows it because everybody was affected by it. It created jobs, but almost more obviously, it was just a great cut. But at the end of the year, the country took in much more money. It's sort of amazing. In other words, people individually paid much less tax but we did much more revenue, so it really does work, you know? It's called incentive. And the Biden economic bus will quickly be replaced with a brand new Trump economic boom. We're gonna have another boom like we had. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country. We had the greatest economy. You know, uh, we had, there's never been a time with jobs better than we had pre-COVID. And then when COVID ended, and we did a lot to end it, we did things, therapeutics, we did things that nobody else thought were even possible. And when it en ended, you call that a bounce back. Everyone immediately then goes back to their job or they get a new job, but you have a big bounce back. Well, we get credit for that bounce back. He doesn't get credit. He likes to take credit for the bounce back, but he doesn't really know what it means. Somebody wrote it for him, but he wants to take credit. We had a tremendous bounce back. And it was a beautiful thing to see. People went back to work. We had that damn dust coming in from China, the China virus, and it was a disgrace. I mean, frankly, what happened to this world, the entire world, $52 trillion and millions and millions of people died all over the world. And what a shame. But we handled it as about as well, I would say, as any country in the world. We bounced back for a lot of different reasons, and we bounced back well. On day one, we will throw out Bidenomics and we will reinstate Maganomics, Maganomics. And we're going to bring manufacturing, tourism and other industry back to New Jersey like it's never seen before. We were doing it and we did it. There's never been a better time. Actually, your governor told me that. They've never had a better time than the three years, three years just prior to COVID. And then after COVID, the recovery was so incredible. We never had a better economy in this country, the history of our country, than it was during my four years as president. And we're going to do something. I think we're going to beat it.
Now, we have a lot of work to do. We got to do something about the fact that 20 million people have come into our country from prisons, from jails, from mental institutions, from insane asylums. And they're terrorists, many are terrorists. Other than that, I think they're actually quite a fine group of people, right? We're going to stop the Biden spending spree. He spends on things like the Green News scam. We're going to halt his inflation death spiral. Think of it, one of the greatest inflations ever in history. If you were making more money, it doesn't matter because yet you were taxed at 50 percent. You got to make over that in order to pick up. That's why people are hearing, oh, our economy, his job numbers are fake. They're totally fake. They're fixed numbers. They're rigged numbers. Everything about them are rigged from the elections to the economy, everything. And by the way, the one thing that's doing well is the stock market. You know why it's doing well? Because I'm leading in every single poll and people think we're going to win. And the stock market, and it's been written about by Scott, some of the great people, they're writing that. If we ever lost, if this election wasn't won by us, you'd see something like in 1929. The stock market's only doing well because everyone thinks we're going to win. We had a great stock market. But it's going up because we're leading in all the polls. If bad polls start coming and we don't want to let that happen, you know, they're trying to rig the vote through this, this crap they're doing. But it's backfired. Never, nobody's ever seen anything like it. I'm more popular now than I've ever been. Can you believe it? They rig the whole thing with the Department of Justice. And every time they indict, I've been indicted more than the great Alphonse Capone, Scarface. Al Capone was so mean that if you went to dinner with him and he didn't like you, you'd be dead the next morning. And I got indicted more than him on bullshit, too. <laughs> bullshit. My father's looking down. I had a father who was great. My mother was great. They had a great marriage. Married for many years. That's one thing. I can't beat him on that one. He was, he was married for a long time. But they're looking down now. They're up there in heaven. Definitely in heaven. And he's looking down. He said, how the hell did my son be placed in that kind of company? But it's okay because the people of this country know it. We're doing great. We've never done better. People understand it. The people, normally that would be a negative, but for us it's a positive because people, they get it. They need to do that in order to win because they've done nothing else. They have a bad everything, everything about them. Think of one thing that's better. You look at the Afghanistan disaster, you look at the border, you look at the economy, the real economy, not the fake economy. Everything they touch turns to what? You shouldn't use that kind of language. Look, look. You can't use word shit, okay? That's like Christie, you know Chris Christie. Does anybody like Chris Christie? Good. So I was in New Hampshire and he was fighting, fighting. You know, he's like uh, totally unhinged. It's called Trump derangement syndrome. I would say he was a he was a major case of Trump derangement syndrome. But he was in there and somebody from the front row said. Sir, he's a fat pig. And I said, but nobody heard. The person was a nice person, but said very, you know, I said, you cannot call Chris Christie a fat pig. You cannot do that. Please, sir, if you call him a fat pig once more, I'm going to have to have you leave the arena. And the guy didn't know what was happening. I said, don't worry about it. I'm only kidding. You know. But I said, you cannot call him a fat pig because you're not allowed to use the fat word. You know, you can use almost any word, but you can't use the fat word. It's career ending. If you, if you call somebody fat, it's career ending. We're all fat. We're go Except for Lawrence Taylor and OJ, they're not fat. They're not fat. They sure as hell weren't fat when they played football, were they, huh? What do you think? I don't think so. Oh, they're great guys. So. We're going to terminate the Green News scam. We're going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to get our energy way down. Don't forget, that's what caused inflation. He let energy get out of hand, and it went to $100 a barrel. 
And now Putin also said, Putin would have never done that with Ukraine. But Putin now says, oh, man, at 100, he can spend a fortune on the war. If he kept it at $40 a barrel, Putin wouldn't have been able to do that. But Russia's made a fortune in this war because this man that we have that doesn't know what he's doing has allowed energy. And right now it's getting close to $100 a barrel again. You're not going to end the war unless you bring down the price of oil. But he doesn't understand that. And it's so simple. But Putin, that would have never happened. If you look at President, you take a look at Xi, President Xi of China, talking about Beijing. Now, they've got ships circling, they have planes, but they never were doing anything. President Xi of China with Taiwan, and I said, if you do that, it's, so, it's going to be so bad for Beijing. You don't want to do that. It's going to be so bad for Beijing. They said, but what do you mean by that? You have to think about that. You're going to have to think about that. Don't do it. And he would never have done it. Let's see what he does. But boy, they have ships circling Taiwan at levels that they've never had. They have planes. It's not very comfortable to be living right now in Taiwan. And so Russia wouldn't happen. That wouldn't have happened. And you know what wouldn't have happened? The attack on Israel on October 7th would not have happened. It would not have happened. But you won't have, getting back to our wonderful area that we love, you won't have to worry about Governor Murphy's 157 windmills. And you know one of the best fighters on that is Congressman Van Drew. He has... He has fought so hard. I don't know. He's around here someplace. There's nobody that fought that right over there. You'll see these things all over the place. They destroy everything. They're horrible and the most expensive energy there is. They ruin the environment. They kill the birds. They kill the whales. But are the ocean floor surveys for their construction that are causing tremendous problems with the fish and the whales and everything else? Nobody even knows what it is. But I think in 20 years, one whale washed up on shore, and then where they have these things, they come up all the time, dead. They come up for sure, yeah. We'll get, he said, they remind him of Chris Christie. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? This can only happen in New Jersey, right, Jeff? It can only happen in New Jersey. The electricity costs. It's the highest in the country. It's what you've got. We are going to make sure that that ends on day one. I'm going to write it out in an executive order. It's going to end on day one. But unfortunately, the Democrats in New Jersey have embraced Joe Biden's radical pro-China plan to eliminate gas-powered cars and trucks. Can you believe it? And force everyone into ultra-expensive electric vehicles that don't go far. I always say, they have a couple of problems. They're too expensive, they're going to be made in China, and they don't go far. Other than that, I think they're wonderful. On day one, I will immediately terminate Joe Biden's insane electric vehicle mandate, and there will be no ban on gas cars and gas trucks in the Garden State. There will be no ban anywhere in the United States of America on gas. You can buy electric if you want, you can buy gas, you can buy whatever you want, and that's the way it should be. It was announced last night that Biden finally, listen to me, he listens to me, you know, he does a lot of things. He listens about, he's about four years late. But he says he's going to put a 100% tariff on all Chinese electric vehicles. Isn't that nice? Should have done this four years ago, but Biden is not going to put this tariff on their gasoline-powered cars or any of the other products. You have to put it on other cars also, not just the electric cars, because he's trying to make them work. You know, the subsidy that they're paying to the people, to, the subsidy they pay to people and to these auto companies, and you have hundreds of thousands of electric cars that are all over the country. I think you can buy them probably cheap if you want them, but they're forcing them on you and you can't do it. It's, not, it's supply and demand. People don't want them. And, and some people do, and the people that do should buy an electric car. I think they're fine. I think they're good. I think Elon, he's a friend of mine, he does a good job, but not everybody should have one. If you want to take a nice trip from, let's say, New Jersey, and you want to go and visit me at the White House in a little while, don't go buy an electric car. You won't make it. Don't go buy an electric car. If you want to drive down to Palm Beach, Florida and see me and play around the golf with me, I'd love to do it. But don't take an electric car because you make about 10 stops because you'll be very late. Your tea time will be long expired. 
But why did he do this years ago? It's only a ploy to get beyond the election and then everything will come crashing down because they're original. You know, one thing I've learned about politicians and I've dealt with them for a long time. When a politician comes out with a policy and then they run in an election and they go back and say what they have to say to get elected, they always go back to that original policy. And you know what this guy's policies are. They are bad. They are really bad. And the funny thing and the sad thing is he really never changed. He goes through like who the hell would keep an open border? Because I think it's killing him in the election. Now, I may be wrong. Maybe this is a great political thing to have millions of prisoners and mental institution people come in. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe I don't understand. Maybe we all don't. Is there anything good about that politically? Is there anything good about high mortgage rates and high taxes? Your taxes are going to go up four times if this lunatic is elected. It's going to go up four times. And by the way, I have to say this. I have great respect for the office of the presidency. I never used to talk about Biden this way until he did something that you can't do. He indicted a very popular president. I mean, I was very popular. I got more votes than any other president in history. You know that. I got more votes than any other sitting president in history. On made up charges and nonsense, you see what's going on, all nonsense. It's got local DAs doing it, but the local DAs are run out of Washington and they're having meetings in Washington. They'll do anything to win. They think that that's going to win. It's not going to win. And it's really backfired. In fact, I heard they were going to do a couple of other things and they said from Washington, don't do it, please don't do it. We're indicting him into the White House. He's going to be indicted into the White House. They said, don't do it. But I have to tell you, though, I was. Uh, and am in awe of the office. I think it's one of the great places, great institutions, so important. But I have great respect for the office of the president, for the presidency of the United States. And I used to talk about him like a politician would talk. I'd say he's not doing a good job on taxes. He's not doing a good job on many, many things. Look at Afghanistan was such a disaster, most embarrassing moment. But I talk about it as a politician would talk about another politician. And now he did something that shouldn't have been done. I got indicted four times in a period of about three seconds. Anytime there's a plane that flies over, if my plane flies over a blue state, the following day I get subpoenaed to go before a grand jury, okay? No, he did something you don't do. You do that in third world countries and banana republics. It's not like it's unknown. And probably in many cases, it's very effective, but they do it in banana republic. We never did it here. I could have pressed Hillary a lot harder. You know, she broke up her phone. She broke them up. She acid washed them. Bit bleach, right? Bit bleach. Nobody even knows what it is. So expensive. But, but I thought, I really thought, you know what? You got to have a country. But I'll tell you what, what he did was just not not something that should ever be done, especially in the way when they make up stuff. You read this crap. Why didn't they do it nine years ago, as an example, or eight years ago? They could have done it many, many years ago. And they waited till the election. They waited right into the middle of the election. They even waited actually to see how I was doing. And in all fairness, I was number one throughout the entire process. We did not have a hard time. You know, we got it in record time. Did you know that? We got it in record time. It was the fastest anybody has ever gotten the nomination, I think from either party, uh, the fastest. We had, you normally, if it was a normal thing, I'd be campaigning right now to try and get it, but we won it two months ago. And nobody's ever done it with that speed. That means you like me. You don't do that to your opponent. You don't do that to your political opponent. It's done in third world countries. It's done in banana republic. It's not done in the United States of America. So then I said, well, now I'm able to speak freely. And that's when I call him the most grossly incompetent man in government, the worst president ever of any country. The whole world is laughing at him. He's a fool. He's not a smart man. He never was. In prime time, he was considered stupid. I talk about him differently now because now the gloves are off. He's a bad guy. Should have never done that because it's so bad for our country. Should have never done it. But again, I'll say it for the second time. 
He's by far the worst president in the history of our country. You could take, you could take, I used to say five, now I say 10, right? I used to say, I think I'm going to make it 15. You could take the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country, add them up. The worst presidents, take them, give me the 10 worst names. They haven't done the damage to our country that this total moron has done, okay? He's a moron. And other country leaders who I know, they laugh at him. They can't believe it. They can't believe what they're getting away with. I would have never talked with that kind of disrespect for a president until he did what you should never do. We're supposed to cherish the office of president. You don't do what he did to try and win votes, to try and hurt your opponent so he can't win. But it had the reverse effect. I'm higher now in the polls than I've ever been. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Good job. Good speech. <laughs> Good speech. No, I'm higher now than I've ever been. And we're going to keep it that way. And we're going to win so big. And we're going to turn this country around so fast. We're going to do it. The biggest thing we have is we have millions of people here that are criminals. We really, I mean, they're criminals. Think of it. Venezuela just announced, and they had a new number, 67, now it's 72%. 72 percent, they're down in crime because they took their gangs, their gang members, they took a lot of their criminals and they moved them into the United States of America. Jail populations all over the world are way down and these fools back there, the press, the fake news, they don't want to report it. You know why they're down? Because they're sending people in their jails into the United States from Africa, from Asia, from all over the world. They're emptying out their jails into the United States. They're emptying out their mental institutions into the United States, our beautiful country. And now the prison populations all over the world are down. They don't want to report that. The mental institution population is down because they're taking people from insane asylums and from mental institutions. You know what the difference is, right? An insane asylum is a mental institution on steroids. <laughs> silence of the Lamb. Has anyone ever seen a Silence of the Lamb? The late, great Hannibal Lecter is a wonderful man. He oftentimes would have a friend for dinner. Remember the last scene? Excuse me, I'm about to have a friend for dinner as this poor doctor walked by. I'm about to have a friend for dinner, but Hannibal Lecter, congratulations. The late, great Hannibal Lecter, we have people that are being released into our country that we don't want in our country. And they're coming in totally unchecked, totally unvetted, and we can't let this happen. They're destroying our country, and we're sitting back, and we better damn well win this election, because if we don't, our country is going to be doomed. It's going to be doomed. So I took hundreds of billions of dollars in tariffs and taxes and fees from China and other countries also, not just China. Everyone rips us, all of them. The European Union is brutal. They all are brutal because they were dealing with people that didn't care. They had no business spent. They were politicians. They didn't want to rock the boat. European Union treats us very badly. They learned. They learned. We did a lot of things with them. Uh, Macron of France, good guy's a friend of mine, but he loves France. And he was going to put a tax on all American business, a very substantial tax, 25 percent on American businesses in France. And my people went. I gave it to Steve Mnuchin. I gave it to others. I said, go in and tell him you can't do that stuff. Don't do it. And they came back and they were unable to make a deal. I said, I'll give you another couple of days. Just tell him I don't want it. He came back. And they said, can't make a deal. I called up Macron of France, the head. Nice guy, loves France. You know, he likes France. He's a friend of mine. But I said, Emmanuel, hi, Emmanuel. How are you, Emmanuel? Oh, Donald, Donald, I love you so much. You're doing such a great job. I said, thank you very much. I agree. But let me just tell you. Emmanuel, you're putting a big tax on American companies doing business in France. You can't do it. Oh, it's too late. Oh, I wish you would have called me early. It's too late, Donald. I cannot do it. I said, yeah, you're going to do something about it. You got to do it. Are you going to do it? I won't be able to. I said, let me just tell you something, Emmanuel. Are you ready? Every bottle of wine and champagne that comes into the United States, this was a Friday evening, starting on Monday morning, is going to be taxed and tariffed at 100%. 
every single bottle of wine and champagne from France will be taxed at 100 percent. No, 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 you cannot do that. I said, I can do it. It's done. I have an order right in front of me. I'm signing it. Uh, you have 10 minutes. Call me back. He calls me back in about three minutes. Uh, Donald, Donald, we are uh, pleased to inform you that we were able to end that horrible tax that we... I won! You know how many deals I made like that? I made more deals like that. I made a lot of deals with telephones. You know, one thing I don't know, I mean, is it better when we don't read these stupid teleprompters all day long? You know? Biden can't get up with the teleprompter. We had a beauty up in, we went to Ohio, and we had 45 mile an hour winds. The teleprompters are like a sailboat. You ever try and reach something that's moving like four or five? And then they blew off the stage. I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with you for an hour and a half, and I don't have any teleprompter. And we winged it. And you know, the gentleman that I was there for, Bernie Marino, ended up winning the nomination by a lot. And he's going to be the next guy, I hope, the next senator from the great state of Ohio, which we won by a lot. But sometimes those are our favorite speeches. And I only do this when I feel really comfortable with the crowd. And do I feel comfortable with you? I love you, people. We are the same. We are the same. We are the same. But uh, so many, so I talked about France, but I do that with a lot. I did that with so many, I did it with Italy where they were going to do something, they were charging us a lot. And I said, if you do that, we're going to take away your visa permits and they immediately change. And other people, I sent people that are very smart in to do the deal and they come back, sir, they will not do it. I said, they'll do it, you got to ask them properly. But it's just, and they're very smart people, but they seem not to get the job done oftentimes. China is building massive automobile plants. I'm sure you're going to be thrilled to hear this one. A friend of mine builds automobile plants. This guy, I don't want to insult him, this guy can't walk across the street, but he can throw up an automobile plant better than anybody in the world. I said, I want to see one of the plants. He said, well, you'll have to go to Mexico. I said, why? He said, the big ones are being built in Mexico. I said, what about the United States? No, the big ones are being built in Mexico. Biden has taken so much incentive away and they're moving into Mexico. And what's happening is the really big ones are being built by China in Mexico to make cars in Mexico by China to sell into the United States to come across the border with no tax. I said, wait a minute, you mean the big automobile plants under construction now are being built in Mexico? That's right. Now, he didn't care. He builds them whether it's here. He doesn't care. He just, you know, he's a guy who builds plants. He's the biggest in the world. I said, so they're being built in Mexico, and they're owned by China, and China's running them, right? Yeah. And they're doing that to avoid tax and labor, expensive, more expensive labor. And they're going to sell all those cars into the United States. So yeah, they're built so that he makes the cars in Mexico, China, and they sell them in here. I said, that won't happen. I said, I will put a 200 percent tax on every car that comes in from those plants. And they're not going to do that because they'll destroy our automobile business. And Biden doesn't want to get involved. And those aren't electric vehicles necessarily. Those are gas powered vehicles, which he's not doing anything about. Do you notice he's trying to save the electrical vehicle, but not the gas powered, which is the vehicle that everybody wants. So you don't have to worry about those plants if I'm elected. If I'm not elected, those plants are going to close up every automobile job in America. You won't be making one automobile in the United States of America. And the United Auto Workers, who, you know, I'm leading in Michigan by a lot, because they're run by an incompetent man that endorsed crooked Joe Biden. And the first thing he does is sign this electrical, this electric uh, vehicle, this mandate, that way they're going to go crazy. They're going crazy with the electric car, costing us a fortune. We're spending hundreds of billions of dollars subsidizing a car that nobody wants and nobody's ever going to buy. And it's just a shame. You see it. It's so stupid. And it's the same thing with foreign policy. Look at what he's doing with Israel. Look at what he's doing. This man is destroying our country. He's destroying our allies. And you know what? I was tough on our allies, too, because our allies always took advantage of us. But once I got them straightened out, it was fine. I mean, we had NATO, and they weren't paying their bills. And they said, well, what are you going to do? He said, you know, Obama came in, and he'd make a speech, and he'd leave. Uh, Bush would come in, he'd make a speech, and he'd leave. 
Trump came in, he made a speech, and he went back, he said, you guys aren't paying your bills. And when I went back the second time, I, did, I couldn't do it the first time, I was in office for about two, two hours. You know, it's hard to go two hours, like my second, I think it was my second meeting was NATO. And it's hard to go immediately. But I said, I'll be back in about six months. And when I came back, I said, you're not paying your bills. And they looked at me, they said, well, you mean to tell me, because I said, you got to pay your bills, or we're not going to protect you with NATO. And the press, the fake news went crazy. And you're talking about, hey, they screw us on trade, and then on top of that, we take care of their military. So I said, no, you have to pay your bills. And one of the presidents from one of the countries, 28 countries at the time, 28 countries, only seven of them were paid up. The rest of them didn't pay. And the United States was paying much more than they should have, like by about 10 times. We were carrying NATO. So we get screwed in trade and we carry NATO. And I said, if you don't do this, we got problems. And one of them stood up and said, sir, do you mean to tell me that if I'm attacked in this very big country, if I'm attacked as a country by Russia, you will not defend me? I said, are you delinquent? He said, well, let's say I was. I said, if you're delinquent, I would not protect you. And you know what happened? And the press killed me because they said, oh, you've treated us so terribly. They respect you more. They like me more than they like other people. They understand. They can't believe they got away with it. For years and years, they got away with it. South Korea, we're paying for their military. We have 42,000 soldiers there. They pay us like nothing. I changed that. But now Biden, I understand, wants to break it. He thought I was too rough and I'm pay they're paying too much. They make a fortune. They took our shipping industry. They took our computer industry. They took so many different industries and they're making a lot of money. They can pay for their military. And these are the things I was doing as president. Are you enjoying this? Let's get on to another subject. But Europe is being flooded with Chinese cars and they don't know what to do. Right now, you know, Chinese, China wants to take over the cars all over the world. They just want to make the cars for everybody, right? That's wonderful. But we'd like to keep our jobs, if you don't mind. But I'm not going to allow it to happen in our car and truck industry. We're going to make sure that our industry grows. It's going to grow like a weed. By the end of my fourth year, our car and truck industry will be triple the size of what it is now, and jobs will be flourishing. We will be setting records in auto jobs and truck jobs. Under Biden, it will all be gone. You will not have any car maker. That's a big, important industry, too. You can't lose it. You're going to lose it. They're going to lose it. I see what's happening already, and I think that's why I'm up, because the United Auto Workers and Auto Workers General are very smart people, and they see what's happening. And I'm up in Michigan, I believe, because of it. And I'm way up in South Carolina. In fact, I had a little, uh, we had a little skirmish with the governor and we won by, did we win by 40 points or 50 points? And that's fine. That's fine. We get along with everybody. Crooked Joe has not just set our economy on fire. He has truly set the world on fire. If you want to know how a weak and pathetic president really is, I mean, the things they do, just think about this. This week he announced that he will withhold shipping weapons to Israel as they fight to eradicate Hamas terrorists in Gaza. No, it's shocking to hear it. Even while there are still American hostages being held by Hamas, and they're saying, oh, October 7th never happened. You know, they say that. And Biden has fallen for it. Crooked Joe's action is one of the worst betrayals of an American ally in the history of our country. I support Israel's right to win its war on terror. Is that okay? I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad politically. I don't care. You got to do what's right. You got it was a terrible attack. October 7th was a terrible attack. I don't know. It's probably bad politically, but I don't care. You have to do the right thing. There would, there would have been no war in Gaza with me in the White House. There would not have even been a chance. You know, Iran was broke when I was president. I said, if you buy oil, anybody buys oil from Iran, they can't do business with the United States. They were totally broke. Now they have $250 billion. They made it all in three and a half years. When I was president, we had peace in the Middle East like never before, and I got the Abraham Accords done when nobody thought it was possible. And they've done nothing with them. We had four countries done, we would have had them all. Every country would have been signed up, in my opinion, including Iran. 
because they wanted to make a deal so badly. Now they don't have to because they're a rich country. Crooked Joe surrendered to the terrorists just like he surrendered to the Taliban. And now he's surrendering our college campuses to anarchists, jihadists, freaks, and anti-American extremists who are trying to tear down our American flag. They want to tear it down. Every single place they go, they want to rip down our flag. The chaos and violence happening on our college campuses right now is all because crooked Joe Biden doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Joe is weak. He's only good at cheating on elections, but it's not him. He's surrounded by fascists around the Oval Office. It's not him. He's not. He's not doing it. Very good at cheating on elections. He doesn't stand up to our enemies abroad, and he does not stand up to the extremists in his own party. The Democrat Party is becoming radicalized. It's becoming radical left, and they're going to lose our country. I always talk about we have enemies on the outside, and we have enemies from within. The enemies from within are more dangerous to me than the enemies on the outside. Russia and China, we can handle. But these lunatics within our government that are going to destroy our country and probably want to, we have to get it stopped. And by the way, by the way, they're not on the right. They're on the left. They're not on the right. They're on the left. It's time for a president who will once again show unyielding strength. We have to have peace through strength. The very same people who are funding the violent campus uprisings are also funding Joe Biden's campaign. Do you believe this? Those people that you see putting up all that money for all those signs. You know, you can always tell a fake, a fake protest when every sign is beautifully made by a printer. All the same color, green signs, everything to have the same, you know. They're all made by the same guy. And you say, the old days, they used to make them in the basement. Everybody would have a different sign. Now, every sign is like green, beautiful. They do a beautiful job. In fact, remind me to find who that printer is because they've done a beautiful job. I have a lot of printing work. Tonight, I'm officially calling on Joe Biden and the Democrat National Committee to return the donations of all anti-Semites, American haters, and financiers of chaos who have funded the chaos on our campuses. Return the money, Joe. They raised plenty of money. When I'm president, we will not allow our colleges to be taken over by violent radicals. And if you come here from another country and try to bring jihadism or anti-Americanism or anti-Semitism to our campuses, we will immediately deport you. You'll be out of that school. On day one of my new administration, I will seal the border, stop the invasion of people pouring through our border, and send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home where they belong. They got to be sent back home. Less than four years ago, we had the most secure border in the history of the United States. We had the most secure border we've ever had by far. In fact, if they ever had that sign, I'd put it up right now. Oh, that's nice. He's a nice looking. Oh, that's me. That's me. That's nice. I, w I was wondering, should I wear the hat or not? I took, I took the hat. I said, should I wear this soccer or not? You know, I, do I put the hat on? But I want to try and stop a little bit of sun coming in. We ended catch and release, built 571 miles of border wall, got Mexico to send 28,000 soldiers to our border free of charge. They gave us free of charge. That was another one. I said to a friend of mine, the president of Mexico, he's a great gentleman. He's a uh, socialist, but these are minor, minor details. I said, you have to give us 28,000 soldiers for our border, free of charge. No, no, no. Why would I do that? I'm not going to do it. No, no, you have to. The people are they're going through your country in caravans. I think it was the name I developed. I developed a lot of names. You notice that? People's names, Pocahontas, lots of different names. Poca How's Pocahontas doing? That name really screwed up her campaign, didn't it? That was... That was actually, she was doing well for president, and then I came up with the name Pocahontas, and that was the end of her. They said, we want you to apologize for calling her Pocahontas. I said, I will, I, I will. But I apologize to the real Pocahontas for getting her wrapped up with this woman. Crooked Joe came in and turned our country into an absolute dumping ground.
in New York this month, an illegal alien criminal pled guilty to savagely murdering a man in broad daylight. You read about it. Stabbing him 10 times in the stomach after also allegedly stabbing and gravely wounding a man in Maryland. He did. He won a crime spree. Wonderful to have him in our country, right? Wonderful. He came in, no problem. In Florida this week, an illegal alien woman was arrested for trying to hire a contract assassin to kill two people. They killed two people violently, and she was the one that hired them. And in February, an illegal alien set loose into our country by crooked Joe Biden was arrested for leading a major New Jersey gang that smuggled illegal aliens across the border, killing many, killing many. Now, I only ask you this question because some of you have heard it, most of you have heard it, but I have it here if you want. Would anybody like to hear, because this is the border, would anybody like to hear the snake? It's a Saturday evening. We got nothing but time. What the hell? I love these Saturday evenings. Is there anything better than a Trump rally? If some of these wackos came along, you know, these liberal singers that actually vote for me, you know, they all vote for me. They say, oh, Trump, I don't know. You know, like Bruce Springsteen. We have a much bigger crowd than Bruce Springsteen, right? Much bigger. I'm sure he's a nice guy. How about Chris Christie? You say, I love Bruce Springsteen. And then they used to throw him out of the concert. When somebody throws you out of a concert, you shouldn't love them. You sort of say, I don't like that music, right? I remember him saying that, then they threw him out of the concert. So this is uh, having to do with our border. An old great song, I had to change it a little bit to make it pertinent, but it is very pertinent and very true. And it's called The Snake, and it talks about illegal Im immigration. And how stupid it is, what we're doing right now, we're letting people come into our country that we c will only be trouble. On her way to work one morning, down the path, along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she sighed. I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. That's our country. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Sighed the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed him and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you bit me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. That's our country. That's our country. Right? That's our country. Mr. Governor, right? That's what we're doing. I think it's very apropos. Did everybody enjoy that? Don't enjoy it. You should be, you should be scared by it. You shouldn't enjoy it. When I return to the White House, we will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of the American suburbs, cities, and towns. They're destroying your cities. They're destroying your towns and suburbs. We will shut down deadly sanctuary cities such as Newark and Philadelphia. We will not let criminals come into those cities. And we will not let them release illegal alien criminals into your streets. 
I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement. And on day one, we will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. No country can sustain what we're going through. It cannot be sustained, what we're going through. Millions and millions of people are taking over our cities, our suburbs. It cannot be sustained by any country. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. They know that. And as you know, I've come here from New York, where I'm being forced to endure a Biden show trial, all done by Biden. Carried out by Ra That's right, all, all being done by him. Carried out by radical Democrat district attorney. You know who he is? Fat Alvin. Huh? Corrupt guy. He's a corrupt and really a corrupt, a corrupt district attorney who's allowed crime in the city to go totally unchecked. They had the other day, they had like 20 district attorneys in, the, in this courthouse for me. And they say there's no crime. Every single legal expert and scholar that's written about it says there's no crime. And they have 12 guys, even 20 guys. I've seen sometime he sits there half a day, all day. In the meantime, they're murdering people out on the streets. And then we have a highly conflicted judge. He's corrupt and highly conflicted, so conflicted. There's never been a judge that's more conflicted. Why don't you look at that? Why doesn't the fake news media look at that? And they're doing the bidding for crooked Joe Biden. This is all being done by crooked Joe Biden. As a top scholar, great legal genius, Alan Dershowitz stated, I've been doing this 60 years and I don't understand what crime he's being charged with. There's no evidence of any crime whatsoever. This case is a sham. He said, I've never seen anything like it. But every single legal scholar is saying the same thing. And by the way, do you notice it's so beautiful now? It was a little warm. You know, we're up here screaming like a lunatic. It was a little bit warm. Now it's so beautiful. I hope nobody's called. But I know I haven't noticed anybody leaving. There's nobody leaving. They never leave. If they leave, when they start leaving, it's time for me to hang it up, right? Nobody ever leaves. All of this persecution is only happening because I'm running for president. If I wasn't leading in the polls by a lot and running for president, they wouldn't be after me. I'd have a nice place. I'd be down in Palm Beach. I'd be traveling the world, I guess. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2020. We're not going to happen. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I am being indicted for you and never forget our enemies want to take my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way. We're gonna be in this thing together. We're all in this together. We're bringing our country back. We're gonna make our country greater than ever before and it's gonna go fast. We're pleased to be joined tonight by some great people, a man of courage and devotion to New Jersey, and I really started this with him, and you have some really good congressmen and women here, but uh, a man that I've been very close to, you know, I hate to say this, used to be a Democrat, and I called him, I didn't know him, I said, you know, you like our policies, why don't you just join the party? And he did, and he went on to beat a Kennedy. He had a very beautiful young woman who was a Kennedy as his first opponent, and he won that one pretty easily. Jeff Vandrew, congressman, you are great. And Jeff and a couple of the people I'm going to introduce, but they're in charge of winning the state. So, Jeff, I'm going to take that big endorsement away if you don't win the state for Trump, okay? <laughs> you did a great job, and I watched your speech. It was excellent. Jeff was horrified by crazy Nancy Pelosi's impeachment witch hunt. He was actually, I couldn't believe it, what they were doing, which was all about covering up the corruption of uh, Crooked Joe. You take a look. They want to impeach him. And I'm actually saying, look, you know, we got a majority of one. 
You got to just run it. We're going to have a big majority, I believe, even in the House. The House is probably the most difficult, but we have things going with, I think, even in the House. But we're leading by a lot. I think we're going to take over the Senate. Things are going to be a lot different. Like millions of Americans, Jeff Van Drew made the switch to voting Republican. And he's absolutely, he's absolutely a star. And by the way, he's the one that's keeping your damn windmills off your coast more than I think anybody. Uh, Jeff, come on up here. Come. Come on up here. Come on up. Jeff Andrew. He's a great gentleman and a great, really, he's somebody that loves this state a lot. Say a few words, Jeff. Come on. Don't fall. Don't fall. You know, if you fall, it's no good. You know, if you fall, you could make the greatest speech in history. You could be Winston Churchill, and it doesn't work. Go ahead. Thank you. Mr. President, our next president, welcome to the largest political rally that the state of New Jersey has ever seen in all its history. I made my speech, so I'm going to be quick, but I have a few questions for you. Do we love this man? Yeah. Are we going to make America great again? Yeah. Now, I want this one to be heard from Maine to Florida to California across this great country. Are we going to win? Yeah. Are we going to win? Yeah. Are we going to win? Yeah. God bless you. Thank you, I love you. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have some other, we have a lot of great politicians out there. But before I do that, uh, we're joined tonight and today by two uh, incredible football legends. New York Giants, Super Bowl heroes. I guess I would have to say uh, Lawrence Taylor is the greatest defensive player ever. I'm a little prejudiced, but I would say that. And a man who was possessed during Super Bowl, he was a Super Bowl MVP, Otis O.J. Anderson in the here. Come on up, fellas, for a second. Come on up. Come on up. These guys. Look at him, Lawrence. You look like you could play immediately. They could use you. Come on up. These guys are serious players. You know, they're my golfing partners, too. Tell them. Can Trump play golf? You have to tell them. <laughs> I just want to say I grew up a Democrat and I've always been a Democrat until I met this man right here and I'll tell you what he will not have to worry about nobody in my family ever Vote for a Democrat again. Okay. <laughs> Don't you just love that guy? Don't you just love that guy? I tell you, it has been a very exciting day. You guys, not one person left here. You're still here yelling and screaming. So. My word is Wildwood. Are you in the house? Yeah. I, no, I can't hear you. Wildwood, are you in the house? Yeah. Thank you guys for all your support. And how about a great shout out for Metro Exhibits, baby? We made it all happen. All the cost of you. Thank you. Great guys, two great guys. Look at look at OJ. How would you like to have to tackle this guy? They are great people. 
Also with us here, a man who's really been uh, a fighter for me for a long time, Congressman Chris Smith. Chris, thank you very much. We appreciate it, too. We don't forget it. And Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. Nicole, she's been our friend for a long time. Everyone's going good. We love it. We love Staten Island. Candidate for U.S. Senate, Christine Serrano Glasser. She's a fantastic woman. She's a fantastic woman. And uh, I think, look, you know what? My record is very unblemished for support. I'm giving her my complete and total endorsement because she is, where are you? Where are you? So her husband's worked for me for right from the beginning, from 2015, actually. And he has been unbelievable. And I got to know Christine and uh, you're going to do great. You're running against a Christie person, the Christie person. I just heard that. I said I wanted to stay out of the race, but her husband's been so good. She's been such a, a tremendous person, loves the state so much. I said, well, but then they said that her her person is a Christie person. I said, I'm endorsing you immediately. So so good luck. Keep my record intact. You have my complete and total Christine. Go out and vote for Christine. And a man that made a hell of a speech today, I'll tell you, Mike Crispy. Where's Mike? Man, did he make a good speech. Thank you, Mike. I watched you from the plane flying overhead. I said, that guy's good. Good. And I know you have big plans for the future, and we're with you. Say hello to everybody, You're our mutual friends, okay? Thank you. Good man. And a man I've gotten to know, and I always said outstanding, and he was one of the candidates running. And it was a sort of a large group. And uh, sometimes you need controversy to get yourself known. And he's a very, uh, he's not a controversial person. He's a very smart person. He's an outstanding person. He made a lot of money, ran for office. He became the governor of, of North Dakota. And what, that, the numbers there, the numbers that he's done there, the job that he's done is unparalleled. And his wife is uh, incredible. In, it's an incredible, it's an incredible couple. And so, Catherine, I want to thank you both for being here. Doug Burgum. Doug Burgum and Catherine, who's been, it's just an incredible couple. And uh, you won't, you won't find anybody better than uh, this gentleman in terms of his knowledge of, you know, he made his money in technology, but he probably knows more about energy than anybody I know. So get ready for something, okay? Just get ready. But Doug Burgum has been incredible, and uh, the country is lucky to have him. A woman who's done an incredible job in Delaware, GOP chair, Julianne Murray. She got rid of the mail-in voting. She got rid of all sorts of things. And she says, we're going to win Delaware. That's a nice surprise. Where is Julianne? Where are you? Where is Julianne? So you think we're going to win Delaware? She said, once you get rid of the mail-in voting, you know, mail-in voting is largely corrupt. Once you get rid of that mail-in voting, and you were able to do that, that's incredible. Well, we're going to see. I've heard good things also, but would love to do that. Thank you, Julianne. Great job you've done at the party. I also want to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms in America, and especially to my wife, Melania. I'll be home in a little while. And we're also thinking about Melania's incredible mother who just passed away, Amalia, one of the most beautiful women inside and out that I've ever known. So we want to say hello. She's up there looking down right now. She's saying, that's a large crowd of people. Where are you? That's a large group of people. From the very first day that we take back the White House from Crooked Joe Biden, I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. Before I even arrive in the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. I know them both very well. We will build a great iron dome over our country, a dome like nobody has ever seen before, better than the one in Israel, which works pretty well, thanks to us also. A state-of-the-art missile defense shield that will entirely be built in America and create jobs, jobs, jobs. Much of it's going to actually be built in New Jersey. We will rescue our health care system from Joe Biden's migrant invasion. 
It was recently announced that Crooked Joe is now giving Obamacare and all free government health care to illegal aliens. You know what? They get treated better than our military. They get treated better than our, our own citizens. Every penny of Biden's plan will be funded by American citizens. Take it out of your pockets, your paychecks, your wallets. It's taken. What they're doing is crazy. This country cannot afford this. We can't afford it. We all have a big heart. We want to take care of people, but it's not sustainable. We won't have a country any longer. I will mean, and it will be, the highest taxes we've ever had to pay, the highest premiums we've ever had to pay, and much longer waits to see your doctors. That's what's happening. It's happening with your schools. Kids are occupying your schools. They're taking the chairs of your own, your own students and your own family members, your children, and they're just not giving them back. And they don't speak English. They're sitting in chairs listening to a teacher talk in English, and they don't speak English. And it will mean Biden's border, his border invasion will become even larger as the world floods over in search of all of these government benefits that we're giving people that come in illegally. And they're coming in illegally because of the benefits in addition to other reasons. According to a new study, illegal immigration is already costing New Jersey residents $7.3 billion every single year. That's $2,100 per household, more than any state anywhere in the country, and it comes and it stops the spending on bridges, roads, New Jersey transit, and all of those other things that we need. Day one of the Trump administration, we will cut off all of Biden's taxpayer giveaways to illegal aliens. If the Biden invasion is not stopped, it will also demolish Medicare and Social Security. It cannot survive by, it cannot survive 20 million people coming into the country. We will take care of Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. We will take care of everything. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any country in the world. We've got so much money, we're going to take care of it. We don't have to destroy our Social Security and other programs. We've also gotten abortion out of the federal government and back to the states the way everybody and all legal scholars always said it should be. I think it's very important because it's a very dividing issue and it's an issue that we've worked very hard on, I have, and some states will like it one way and another way, but everybody has always wanted it for 52 years brought back into the states. And that's what's happened. It's now up to the will of the people in each state. Some states will be more conservative and others will be more liberal, but the people will now decide. And that's the way they've, everybody has always wanted to be. Every legal scholar, some will be conservative, some will be more liberal, some will have more weeks than others or many more weeks. Others won't have the same number, but the people will be decided. We took it out of the federal government. Every legal scholar, every Democrat, for the most part, at the time, for years they've been trying to do it. If the radical Democrat extremists get their way, they will have a federal law on abortion in the eighth and ninth month, and even executing the baby after birth. It's okay. They want to execute the baby. They have laws. You look at the governor, the former governor of Virginia, execute the baby after birth. We will decide. You remember. But you can't do that. And the eighth month and the ninth month, they are the radical ones. Every voter has got to go with his heart and do what's right. But you also remember, you have elections. You have to get elected. So I want to just thank the six Supreme Court justices, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, and Amy Coney Barrett for the wisdom and the courage they showed on this long-term, very contentious issue. Getting it back to the states puts the question where it belongs with a vote of the people, and over time it will work out, and it already is working out, and the country is starting to come together on this unbelievably contentious issue. So in addition, we're going to do a lot of other things, but that's uh, something we had to do. We had to do it. And again, for 52 years, 
They wanted to bring that issue back to the states. It never belonged in the hands of the federal government. And if you take a look at Ohio, they just voted a different vote than people thought. Much more liberal, you would say. Much more, as they would say, progressive. I use the word liberal. Uh, Kansas, the same thing. But that's the way it is. And it's something that uh, we should cherish. We were able to do something that nobody was able to do, and it's all starting to come together, the issue of abortion. In addition, we're going to give back our police. We're going to give them back the protection and the respect that they need. We're going to give them immunity so they don't get sued and lose their families, lose their homes, lose their pensions. And we will stand up to radical Marxist DAs like Soros-funded DA in Philadelphia, Larry Krasner, who has set loose thousands of dangerous criminals onto the streets that go around killing people. I will also stop Joe Biden's sinister plan to abolish the suburbs. He's trying to abolish the suburbs in your state. And we're not going to let him do it. Crooked Joe is trying to obliterate single family zoning in New Jersey and every other state and force you to pay for the construction of ultra dense housing projects in beautiful residential neighborhoods where your house is. He will destroy your property value. He will destroy your wealth. He will let it happen. He wants it to happen. He's already getting ready to sign legislation to let that happen. We're not going to let him destroy New Jersey and Pennsylvania and all of these other places that people are very happy and they've worked hard to live there. And we will end it on day one. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety and beauty better than they have ever been before. We will take over the horrible run capital of our nation, Washington, D.C., and clean it up, renovate it, rebuild our capital city so that it no longer is a nightmare of murder and crime. People are being murdered there on a weekly basis, but rather it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. We're going to fix it, renovate it, and make it free of crime. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I will keep men out of women's sports. How would you like to be a woman in a woman's team and have to play something against LT? I don't think. This is not going to work out well. I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech. And I will secure our elections. We have to secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship and voter ID. Very simple. And we have honest elections. But until then, Republicans must win. We have to win this election coming up. We want a landslide. And frankly, there's an expression I've been using. You've got to make it too big to rig. If we win by enough, doesn't matter. They can't do it. So if you want to save America, register, get an absentee or mail-in ballot, vote early or vote on election day. It doesn't matter. But whatever you do, you must get out and vote. This year, election season begins on September 16th and goes all the way to November 5th. So it's not like just November 5th. It goes to November 5th. This is going to be the most important election in the history of our country. We will protect your ballot, but you must do your part. You must get your ballot in. We have to win. And if you can, donate to cancel out the money. You have to. Look, if you can't donate, don't donate. You got to take care of yourselves. But if you can, do whatever you can for the Republican Party, because what they do is they raise so much money through different groups that are not groups that are on our side. So in conclusion, together, we're taking on some of the most menacing forces and vicious opponents of our that our people have ever seen. We've never seen we've never seen anything like what's happening in our great country. And I, I really have to say in our once great country, because right now our country is not a great country. It's a country that's in trouble, big trouble. 
But no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we're fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to this. This nation doesn't belong to them. This nation belongs to you know who? You. It belongs to you. This is your home. This is your heritage. And our American liberty is your God-given right. From Morristown to Mount Laurel, from Patterson to Pennington, and from Ocean City to Sea Isle to right here in Wildwood, New Jersey. It's been home to some of the toughest, smartest, and most talented Americans ever to walk the face of the earth, right here. This is the state that pioneered the boardwalk, the diner, the motion picture, and gave the world American legends like Thomas Edison, Buzz Aldrin, Frank Sinatra, and so many more. New Jersey is where General George Washington led the army to victory at Trenton and Princeton. And this is where generations of New Jersey patriots helped build this country into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, it's lost its willpower, and it's lost its strength. We are a nation that has quite simply lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Less than four years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. You're going to save our country. We're going to save it during this election period, during this election that goes for so long. Elections used to be one day, now they go for 60 days, 61 days. Bad things happen. We're going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country, and we will rout the fake news media. We will drain the swamp. And we will liberate our country from these tyrants and villains once and for all. We are going to liberate our country. We're going to take back our country. Like those patriots before us, we will not bend. We will not break. We will not yield. We will never give in. We will never give up. And we will never, ever, ever back down. With your support, we will go on to victory, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. And we will evict crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country, from the White House. We're going to evict this man, the worst president by far. Jimmy Connors is Jimmy. Jimmy Connors is good. He's also happy. Jimmy is a very happy man, both of them, because you know what? They want him out. Jimmy Carter had a bad reputation. Right now, he is considered a totally brilliant president by comparison. Right now, he is a totally brilliant president by comparison to Joe Biden. Joe Biden is the worst in history. We have to get him out. We have no co We will not have a country left. If we have to go through years of this, even five months left, it's too much. It's a real possibility that they can't handle it. The great silent majority is rising like never before, and under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one beautiful, glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make 
America great again. God bless you all. Let's win this state. We're going to win it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We love you all.